Today, I'm going to be ranking all the best primaries and Roblox rivals. I'll be looking at DPS, combos, reload times, and everything in between. But wait, if you guys want to win a free medkit bundle or skin case of your choice, make sure to like, sub, and join my Discord server. And also make sure to type your username in the comments down below. Anyways, let's take a look at all the weapons and see their stats as well as their rankings. At number 10, we have the Grenade Launcher. And wow, I was really surprised I had to put it this low, but honestly, I couldn't think of a worse primary. Its main issue is the fact that it does such low damage to the body, only 35 splash and 100 direct hit. To be honest, it still looks good on paper with a tiny 10% movement speed reduction, but for some reason, I just haven't encountered a good Grenade Launcher player that's actually been challenging to fight. The only time I've actually seen people use this thing is as a mobility tool, since it basically can act as a grenade, but with 6 uses if you shoot it under your feet. I remember when I thought this would be the most OP weapon that I always wanted, but now it's just so disappointing, especially for the huge price of 425 keys. And realistically, nobody's gonna buy it for 425 keys, it's pretty much a pay to win gun that costs 1900 robux. Yeah, it kinda sucks when the expensive guns you pay for cost 1900 robux. At number 9 we have the Sniper. <laughs> Yeah, I know, another big shocker. I know I may have just made half of you guys click off the video, but hear me out. Unless you guys are playing on mobile or console with aimbot and auto shoot turned on, or you're a top 100 sweaty player, you can absolutely never win against anybody with decent movement. Unless you're playing on Splash, and that means this list is invalid and Sniper becomes the best gun in all of existence. But, assuming you're playing on a somewhat good map like Arena, Crossroads, even Docks or Construction, you will be able to outmaneuver like 95% of Snipers by just slide jumping and scythe dashing. Unless they're goofy on mobile auto shoot aimbot players, then you're cooked. Overall, I'd say this weapon's good if you've crazy aim or used mobile slash control or aimbot, but I don't really think it's good for most people, especially at the price of 75 keys, making it the most expensive standard weapon. Another bad thing is that you basically always need to hit headshots like literally all the time, since it takes 3 hits to kill someone if you hit body shots. Next up at number 8 is the shotgun. Not just because it's a zero skill weapon that can be countered by running away, but also because you'll be bullied out of existence if you actually get a kill with it. Okay. Yeah! Light work easy, KYS! Apart from being the most frowned upon weapon by the entire community and being garbage at far range, it is also bad because of its very long reload of about 4 seconds, and its semi-low ammo capacity of 7, although this is pretty high for a shotgun with a slow fire rate. It deals a high amount of damage across 10 pellets, each one doing around 7.5 damage to the body and 11.25 damage to the head, making it super good from around 3 feet away. This gun sadly suffers from crazy spreads, so you won't be doing more than 20 damage from a moderate distance. In short, I recommend you stay off this weapon unless you're in a map like Backrooms or Arena, maybe. Although people can just get high on the map and kill you. Plus, they'll probably yell. Okay. Yeah! At number 7, we have the RPG, and to be honest, if this video was made just a single week ago, this may be the number one weapon in the game. But, as of update 6, it has been nerfed so hard that the highest I can give it is number 7. This is because you now have to get 2 direct hits, or 1 direct hit and a splash to kill somebody. Whereas in update 5, you could just get 1 direct hit and get yourself a kill. The RPG is really only viable like the shotgun when in closed spaces, since the projectile travels far too slow to be useful in outdoors or across wide hallways. However, if you are in an enclosed space, the RPG is almost unmatched since you can not only control where you are using its explosion, but you can also control where others are. Whenever I see a good RPG player, they're always blasting me away with it so I can't hit accurately. Stats wise, the RPG does 120 damage with a direct hit or 40 damage with a splash hit. That means it's pretty good if you can lead your shots. Some of the cons of this weapon are its large movement speed reduction of minus 20% and its annoying long reload of 2 seconds per shot. Overall, I would say it's like an improved version of the shotgun, but also keep in mind that you might be bullied for using this low skill weapon. <laughs> Number 6, the minigun. Man, I really wanted to put this higher, since it's the most powerful weapon in the game in terms of DPS, meaning that can kill anybody in under 0.4 seconds, assuming you can hit all headshots. However, this weapon has two main downfalls. One being that it takes a second to spool up, which is pretty awful in a fast-paced game like Rivals. But, this can be mitigated by charging it up by using right-click, but this brings out a second issue. You now move at the speed of a slug. 
You may have crazy DPS potential, but that really doesn't matter when your enemy can just shoot a flare at you and then you'll die because you can't move out of the way. However, unlike the past weapons I talked about other than the sniper, that gun has some sweats that use it. I have met some very sweaty minigun players who will melt you in like half a second of spawning in. They are rare though, since the minigun costs a whopping 450 keys. That's not cheap. And of course, much like the grenade launcher, nobody really buys this with keys. They all pretty much buy it with the heavy weapons bundle that costs 1900 Robux. Ouch. At number 5 we have the Burst Rifle. This weapon's like the AR's unpopular friend. It's good if you have very good timing and skill, but if you don't, then you won't go very far with this gun. The whole philosophy behind the Burst Rifle is that you can peek out from behind corners and temporarily get super high DPS, and then go back undercover. And although I'm certain I have seen a few players master this, I would not recommend this gun for people with average aim. In most use cases, the AR will serve you much, much better. Another downfall of this gun is that you can get really hurt bad by katanas, since with the AR you can stop firing when you know they're deflecting, but with the burst rifle, you're forced to keep firing your burst. I've seen this lead to people losing half their health, just by being hit by their own bullets. This gun isn't all bad though, there's a reason I gave it the 5th spot on the list. And those reasons are, it's got a fast reload, good ammo capacity, and most important of all, the fact that it keeps you from wasting all your ammo. You can definitely main this weapon if you're good at peeking in and out of cover. Otherwise, I'd personally just stick to the AR, especially since it's free and the burst rifle's 25 keys. Number 4, the bow. Now, I know most of you are thinking that this weapon's awful, and to be honest, I was thinking about putting this weapon even higher. But no, I can't do that without annoying everybody. But yeah, I do think the bow is one of the best weapons and rivals for a few reasons. One, it does really high damage, up to 120 in fact if you can get a charged headshot, so you really can use it well if you're used to sniping. Two, the bow can take advantage of a strange hitbox. This can also work against you sometimes when you literally hit your opponent and it doesn't register for some strange reason, but you can also use this to your advantage. After spending roughly 7 hours using the bow, I definitely got a feel for the hitbox, and I have hit some wacky shots before. Apart from the weird hitbox, you can also use the charging mechanic to your favor by hiding under cover then hitting crazy shots that can deal up to 120 damage. The bow is definitely a good weapon if you're used to heavy hitters with a low fire rate, like the shotgun, sniper, RPG, or others. But I also came from the burst rifle, so I guess you can pick it up with a more conventional gun like the AR. I would describe this weapon as a slightly softer hitting, faster firing, no scope sniper. The stats for the bow are 20, 40, 60, and 80 damage to the body, depending on charge, and 30, 60, 90, and 120 damage to the head, depending on charge again. Apart from the bow itself, holding this weapon allows you to double jump and gives no movement penalty. Honestly, I think this is probably the best primary if you have a movement centric playstyle. Out of all the weapons on this list, this is definitely my most used. At number 3 we got the good ol' AR. Although it's the first weapon you get when playing Rivals, it's arguably one of the best. It is by far one of the most commonly used weapons in Rivals among every player type, and that's for a reason. It has amazing DPS, only taking 1.187 seconds to kill an enemy with body shots only, and under 0.9 seconds with headshots only. It fires at a very fast 600 RPM or 10 shots per second, and has a pretty short reload of only 1.5 seconds. In addition to this, it doesn't really hinder your movement much because it only causes minus 10% movement speed. The only bad thing about this gun is that it can only fire for 2 seconds without reloading, and there are plenty of ways to defeat it since it's so commonly used. One particular weakness being the katana, although that affects basically every gun that uses a bullet. Overall, I'd say this gun's really a jack of all trades. It's okay in basically every situation, but not super good in any. It also doesn't really require that much skill to use, although it can be skillful sometimes. Unsurprisingly, number 2 is the paintball gun. This gun is single-handedly the best weapon for competitive traditional play. The reason is because it has such a high DPS while keeping the mobility and speed of guns like the AR or burst rifle. Basically, imagine it as a refined pay-to-win version of the AR that splats paint all over your vision. Playing against paintball players is super annoying, so they might... Ah, also, be very careful not to hit a katana player, since your super high DPS will absolutely cook you. Other downfalls of the paintball gun are its long reload, kinda slow fire rate, no headshot multiplier, and low reserve ammo capacity. On paper, this gun's only marginally better than the AR, especially now that the paint doesn't hide you from your enemy. To be honest, I wouldn't really save up for this weapon even if you like using the AR, just because it's not much better. But it is a little bit better, so I had to place it at number 2. 
Stats wise, the paintball gun does 20 damage to both the body and the head at approximately 135 DPS, slightly higher than the AR. Now for number one, drum roll please. The flamethrower. Uh, I'm sure you've encountered some goofy pay to win player with a hundred different skins on the flamethrower. They're an absolute pain to fight since they have such huge range and literally prevent you from healing while they have good mobility at the same time. The only real way to beat them is by out DPSing them, but you won't really be able to do that unless you have crazy aim and movement. And if they have good movement, then there's really nothing you can do since all they have to do is just out maneuver you and then deal their crazy damage. The flamethrower does approximately 75 DPS, which sounds really low, but you don't really have to aim at all. And you have a surprisingly long range with the flamethrower. Definitely expect players to be toxic to you if you use this gun. <laughs> at a price of 400 keys though, most players can't really get this free to play. Like the minigun and the grenade launcher, most players just buy this in the heavy weapons pack. So I recommend sticking to the AR or the bow if you want to dominate 1v1s free to play. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to like, sub, and join my Discord server for weekly giveaways and awesome community events like live streams. Until the next, goodbye.